another coffee here, Chef. Coming right up, Virgil. Hey, Tiana. Morning, Georgia. Hey, how you doing, Tiana? Hey, y'all. Disney directors and animators love to hide Easter eggs and links to their other movies, and we love to spot them. Here are 10 Disney connections in The Princess and the Frog that you might have missed. Keep watching to the end to discover which character appears in the intro sequence for many Walt Disney pictures. Enchanté. A tip of the hat from Dr. Facilier. King Triton Float Ron Clements and John Musker directed The Princess and the Frog, and they also directed The Little Mermaid. Have you ever seen anything so wonderful in your entire life? Wow, cool! So it makes sense that they hid some Easter eggs relating to the 1989 movie in The Princess and the Frog 2, like including Ariel's father, King Triton, on a Mardi Gras float during a parade. Want to know another fun fact about this scene? The directors also included themselves in it, in animated form. They're dressed in fish costumes, tossing bead necklaces called throws to the crowd. Look further to the left and you'll see Bruce W. Smith too, dressed in a costume with a seashell on his head. He was the lead character animator for Dr. Facilier. Magic Carpet during the opening credits of The Princess and the Frog, we see a busy street scene. The people of New Orleans are going about their business. Look up at the balcony in the top right corner of the screen, and you'll see a woman with her laundry hanging out to dry. She's shaking out something pretty special over the railings, too. It's the magic carpet from Aladdin. It's got that blue background pattern border and detailed center. It's even got the gold tassels on each corner. The Magic Carpet's cameo isn't surprising. After all, Ron Clements and John Musker directed Aladdin, too. <laughs> Why, you hairy little thief. Genie's Lamp. The directors also included another Aladdin-themed Easter egg in The Princess and the Frog, and that's the Genie's Lamp. This little nugget turns up during Mama Odie's song, Dig a Little Deeper. Mama Odie is throwing various items out of an old trunk. A seashell gets caught in her pet snake, Juju's mouth, and the lamp goes flying past. It's not just any old lamp, as it has the same exact markings and shape as the genie's lamp in Aladdin. Animal Canes Sticking with Mama Odie and Juju, they also have a moment that calls to mind the 1951 animated movie Alice in Wonderland. Mama Odie straightens her pet snake out into a rod to use it as a cane to help her find her way around. She eventually smashes his head into a bell by accident, and Juju returns to his coiled posture. This is so reminiscent of the Queen of Hearts playing croquet in Alice in Wonderland. She picks out a flamingo and straightens its neck to use it as a croquet mallet. Poor flamingo. Lewis and Madame Mim Mama Odie, she the voodoo queen of the bayou. When Lewis the alligator tells Naveen and Tiana about Mama Odie's magic and spells, he links back to the 1963 movie The Sword and the Stone. When he mentions Mama Odie's voodoo, he grabs some bayou moss from up above and holds it over his head like pigtails. With his freaky face poking out, he's totally recreating a scene from The Sword and the Stone. Did you know that I can make myself uglier yet? Well, that would be some trick. Uh, want to bet? A113. When we see Tiana catching a trolley to her second job, it has the number A113 on the front. This pops up in lots of Disney and Pixar movies, and it's a nostalgic nod back to the animator's classroom days. The majority of Disney and Pixar animators spent time in Cal Arts classroom A113. This is where they learned character animation and design. There's another fun Easter egg on the trolley, or should we say, in the trolley. It's conducted by the movie screenwriter Rob Edwards. Jack Skellington Dr. Facilier's shadow demons are scary enough in their own right, but when you throw a recognizable spooky character into the mix, they get even freakier. We're talking about none other than the patron spirit of Halloween himself, Jack Skellington. The protagonist of Tim Burton's 1993 Disney movie, The Nightmare Before Christmas, would fit right in with that scary crowd. When Dr. Facilier summons a whole group of his friends from the other side, one of them looks scarily familiar. Those large oval-shaped eyes and tall skinny frame definitely look like they belong to the pumpkin king of Halloween Town. Books. When Tiana transforms into a frog, all eyes are on her surprising new form. <laughs> 
so it's not surprising that most viewers will miss the subtle nod to two other Disney princesses during the scene. Look real close at the spines of the books on the shelf in Charlotte's room. You'll notice that one is Rapunzel and another is The Little Mermaid. It's not surprising Charlotte owns them, after all, she's obsessed with becoming a princess. But why did the directors choose those two titles specifically? We already know that the directors also worked on The Little Mermaid, and Rapunzel was the working title for the next Disney feature film, Tangled. Firefly Stars There she is, the sweetest firefly in all creation. Did you know the idea of stars being fireflies relates back to the 1994 film The Lion King? There's a scene where Pumbaa, Timon, and Simba contemplate the night sky. Timon believes the stars are fireflies that got stuck up there in that big bluish black thing. I always thought they were balls of gas burning billions of miles away. And Simba says they're the great kings of the past watching over us. Ray's fate seems to support Simba's theory, and it relates to another Disney movie, as we're about to discover. Second star to the right. When Ray passes, it's one of the saddest scenes in the whole movie, but it's followed by a wonderful moment when his grieving friends look up into the night sky. They see a second star appear alongside Ray's longtime love, Evangeline. What makes this moment even more special is its secret link to another Disney movie. Take a closer look at the stars, Ray and Evangeline. Remind you of anything? They look just like the second star to the right image in the 1953 movie Peter Pan. That's the entrance to Neverland. We also see these two stars at the beginning of the Walt Disney Pictures intro in many Disney movies. That's a pretty sweet position for Ray and Evangeline to occupy. Which of these Disney connections did you spot in The Princess and the Frog? And which is your favorite? Be sure to let us know in the comments. And that's a wrap! Please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more great videos like this one. Thanks for watching! See you next time!